Hi there. Welcome to my physics class. In our lesson today, we are going to look at uh, a topic in Form 1, physics, that is uh, pressure in solids. In particular, we are going to look at how to calculate the greatest pressure exerted by a solid. We also want to see how we can get the least pressure exerted by a solid. Uh, for us to get there, we will need to look at a question here. And the question requires us to calculate the greatest pressure exerted on a flat surface by a wooden block of mass 500 gram if it measures 20 centimeter by 5 centimeter by 2 centimeter. Now on the other side of the board, there, there, there is a, a sketch to help us uh, visualize what this kind of block is. The first one, the block is resting on its uh, smallest surface. The second one, with its largest surface, and this one with the remaining uh, surface. Now, for us to go through this, we need to recall something. We need to recall the formula for pressure in uh, solids. Pressure equals force divided by area. We can see clearly that the formula for working out pressure in solid is actually a fraction. And that's why I would like us to bring to mind uh, the knowledge of fractions that we have in, uh, uh, from our mathematics. For example, if we divide 4 by 2, we'll get 2. What happens to this value if we reduce the denominator while holding the numerator constant? Like in this case, what happens to pressure if we reduce the area? What, what happens to this fraction is exactly what will happen to the pressure uh, when the area is reduced. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. Suppose we reduced this 2 to 1. We get 4 divided by 1, and that gives us 4. So the value, the value of this fraction has increased from 2 to 4. We could go further and say we divide this by a smaller number, and we divide this by a half. The result will be 8. It therefore appears uh, like for the fraction, if the numerator remains constant, but the denominator keeps reducing, the value of the fraction keeps on increasing from 2 to 4 to 8. What if we moved the other way? We start, we start by dividing 4 by a half. It's 8. We divide 4 by 1. That means we've increased. We get 4. And we divide 4 by an even bigger value, and we get one, uh, 2. It is clear that as long as the force remains constant, a reduction in the area of contact results in an increased pressure. So we can say the smaller the area, the larger the pressure if the same force is applied. In other words, a reduction in area results in an increase in pressure. And this explains to us why when uh, a needle is pressed onto our skin, we feel uh, 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 more pain, yeah? Uh, for example, a pen. A pen has two sides. 
the flat side and the sharp side. The sharp side exerts greater pressure because and it causes more pain when a pen is pressed onto your skin with the sharp side because of the reduced area. So from the formula then we can see the larger the force, the greater the pressure if the area is held constant. And the larger the area, the smaller the pressure if the force remains. We can therefore now answer our question. We get the greatest uh, pressure. And we've said for that one, we need the smallest area. So we need to work out that. We work out the smallest area. And from our solid, the smallest area is got when we multiply 5 by 2 centimeter. So it's 5 centimeter times 2 centimeter. This gives us 10 square centimeter. We, we can convert that to square meter by dividing by 10,000 and that gives us 0 0.001 square meter. So the smallest area in this case is 0 0.001 square meter. Now because in the question we'll be required to work out the least pressure, it means we need also to get the largest area for our solid. So the smallest area, here it is, 5 by 2. The largest area, 5 centimeter by 20 centimeter. So we need to get that. Largest area equal to 5 centimeter by 20 centimeter. That gives us 0 0.01 square meter. I have multiplied 5 by 20, got an, uh, 100 square centimeter, divided by 10,000, and ended up with 0 0.01 square meter. So we are ready now to answer the question, or to, uh, to work as per our objectives. So we get the greatest pressure greatest pressure equals force divided by smallest area and this is equal to now for the force we should have worked out the force here we are given the mass the mass is 500 gram so we can work out the weight. The weight, uh, we'll get it by converting this, first of all, to kilogram, by dividing by 1,000, and multiplying by 10, so that we get 5 Newton. So this weight, uh, the weight of our block is 5 Newton, and this is what we'll use as the force. That will be our force. 5 Newton. So we can now work out the greatest pressure. It is force as 5 Newton divided by the smallest area. And this will give us 5,000 Pascals. So we have the greatest pressure there. Force divided by the smallest area. And we've seen that our smallest area in this case is that one. So we now need to go to our second objective, to calculate the least pressure exerted by a solid. So least pressure. This will be given by force divided by uh, largest area, largest, largest area. Just like we've said, when we make the denominator bigger, the value of the fraction reduces. So in this case, 
the larger the area, the smaller the pressure for the same force. So that's what we are working out now. And this gives us 5 Newton divided by 0 0.01 square meter. That's what we got here. And this gives us 500 Pascal. Now this brings us to the end of our lesson today. Remember to subscribe. Remember also to ring the bell so that whenever there is a new video, you can be notified. And remember also to share with other people who may find this information useful. Otherwise, for now, it's goodbye from me. Until next time.